So for the last few days, monkeypox is the new brick on the wall. So it's been there in the news and there has been a lot of public scare regarding this new infection at a time when already the whole world has already been taken down with COVID and we are still seeing the repercussions of the COVID virus pandemic that affected the whole world in the last two, two and a half years. So what is monkeypox virus? How is it related with the smallpox virus? And how can we diagnose treat and prevent it so this whole talk is about this thing so let's dive in and get started a monkeypox virus is one of the fourth orthopox viruses and it is one of the viruses that causes a pox infection and there are different types of pox infections one is the uh, historical smallpox virus disease which has now been eradicated from the world the last case uh, occurred in the 70s and i think it was 78 or 79 when the world hall world health organization finally declared the world as free of smallpox virus now back in the 50s 60s and 70s it used to cause a lot of uh, infections worldwide there used to be high mortality and even in those cases where the mortality was not high it uh, led to a lot of disfigurement because the uh, rash itself uh, used to leave residual scars especially on the face. So there were a lot of aesthetic applications for those people who were affected by this virus and had to carry those scars for the rest of their lives. So monkey uh, uh, pox virus, if you look at this diagram, so it has got uh, two forms. One is the capsular form and one is the M form, which is known as the uh, mulberry form. So depending on the penetration of the strain, uh, the M form or the C form, they are actually covered with short uh, hair like uh, structures, and this uh, gives them different forms of antigenicity by which it can uh, enter the human body and can infect uh, the host cells. Now, basically, coming down to the monkey pox virus. Now, monkey pox, as the name says, monkey, basically, it was initially detected in the monkeys 40 50 years back. But traditionally, it has been seen that it mostly affects some form of mammals, especially uh, rodents and um, non-human primates. So it's there in the monkeys, it's there in the chimpanzees. These days, it's mostly in the rodents like squirrel, uh, foxes. So um, it's there mostly, the reservoir of infection is there in the uh, non-human primates, rodents and some squirrels. Now, occasionally, it can infect humans as well and uh, in the last uh, two or three decades that we've seen that uh, every now and then somehow people get affected by monkeypox virus though we don't know of any like worldwide uh, great pandemics but uh, uh, from time to time small epidemics or small outbreaks it do happen uh, i remember one happened in the united states it was probably 17 18 years back and then there was uh, another one in Cameroon. it was probably three or four years back so small outbreaks here and there have been occurring but it has never led to a global threat now currently we are um, hearing that uh, a lot of cases have been detected a lot in the sense that like obviously we were not expecting a single case and uh, there have been a few cases which have been detected in Canada, in Portugal, in Spain and in United Kingdom as well. We will talk about that as well. But there has been a scare that are we going to confront another pandemic after uh, we have already faced COVID. So uh, going further into the uh, epidemiology. Now this monkeypox virus, the transmission uh, from animal to human or in certain cases from human to human it occurs via droplets so salivary secretions respiratory excretions like somebody's coughing somebody's spitting so that can contain if the person is infected that you know obviously these body fluids would be infected with the viruses and if the other person comes in contact with these infected secretions he can be infected with monkey paws most importantly one of the greatest like mode of transmission is coming across with infected lesions. Obviously, it causes a characteristic rash on the skin. So if a person 
uninfected person comes in direct contact with these lesions and again there have been like a debate for how long you need to be in contact with these lesions some authorities say that you need to be in contact with these lesions for a couple of hours before uh, you your you know you you can get infected by the virus and they say like just coming across like for example if you are standing in a high street queue and somebody who's infected he comes and he's standing behind you uh, there are, is a very less chance that you will get it from like this much close proximity. You have to be in close contact for a certain period of time before the virus can infect you. Now, as I told you earlier, it is usually acquired by contact with an infected animal. So, for example, if the rodent is infected or if the monkey is infected and people who are working in jungles or working in close uh, contact with these animals, they can basically uh, get this infection. So, they are the one who uh, have got the uh, largest threat in term of like getting this infection so that's why we see typical outbreaks in west and central africa obviously these are sub-saharan uh, countries where uh, there is a lot of like uh, jungle and wildlife and people have to live like you know they are cohabitants with these wildlife and they come across these animals so that's why uh, they are more prone to uh, get this infection and the probability is always high so historically from person to person has been limited we know of a very few cases except these the current one that are happening at this point in time if we look across in the past person to person person to person transmission has been limited even if it has been there it's not been like on a massive scale now this current infection and i will start with uk I think uh, the uh, UK Health Security Agency has reported around seven cases, confirmed cases of uh, monkeypox virus. And uh, these cases were mostly in gays and homosexual people or those like men who had sex with men. Uh, though this is also uh, known, I mean, this is a scientific fact that monkeypox is not an STD, so it's not a sexually transmitted disease. So these seven cases were probably gays and homosexual people. Why it occurred in that? Oh, well, the, the usual theory is that it's not because of sexual transmitted disease. It's probably uh, the intimacy of the relations might have caused the people to come across the lesions. You know, if one person was infected, the other person was close, quite close to the other one uh, in the sense that he had some hours of exposure to the lesions and probably that caused uh, infection in the other one. And uh, we think because of this, like, you know, uh, uh, this thing that which was common in them, that they were like, you know, homosexual and gays, this is sort of a spurious relationship. In fact, it is the thing that probably because of these types of relationships, they are very close and they were more, uh, you know, exposed to the lesions that caused, you know, transmission from one person to the other person. So seven cases in UK. We have got at the moment uh, 33 uh, global cases confirm I think probably if um, uh, I think probably it has been increased now to 35 so 35 confirmed cases and there are 42 suspected cases as well like they haven't been diagnosed but they are like under, undergoing investigation so probably we are looking around like 35 to uh, sorry 75 to 77 cases around the globe and as I told you seven in uh, UK one case in uh, Canada and then there have been a few cases in Spain and Portugal as well. Now coming down to the uh, strains of monkeypox, like there are two strains. One is known as the Congo strain or the Central African strain. And the other one is known as the West African strain, which is more uh, predominant in the Western uh, African region. They say that the Congo strain is more deadly and the mortality is around 10% in the, 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 the Central African or the Congo strain while they say that the mortality is slightly less for the Western African strain. Now, the UK cases, uh, the seven cases, they were all infected by the West African strain. Now, as I told you that uh, if we compare this current outbreak with some previous outbreaks, in uh, 2003, there was an outbreak in the US. I think 50 people were uh, infected when uh, some people they actually imported joint rats cambian joint rats into a state of america and those people who were handling these joint rats probably these joint rats had like what they were like harboring this monkeypox virus and they got infected again they got infected because they were in close contact and they were working with these animals 
Then we had another outbreak uh, just a couple of years ago that was in 2018 in the Central African Republic of Cameroon and a uh, few cases got infected. Again, these were the cases like, you know, who were in close contact with the primates and uh, they got. But again, all of these outbreaks were contained outbreaks. So like they were local epidemics, but then, you know, within a short span of time, uh, the cases died down. So there was no like sort of a massive spread of the cases into the community or across the borders uh, causing international scare. Now, obviously, because of the way COVID has behaved in the last two and a half years, there has been much scare uh, around the current outbreak of uh, monkeypox virus. And some people are um, fear mongering and, you know, comparing it uh, uh, with the comeback of the smallpox virus. Uh, despite the fact that we know that smallpox virus has been eradicated, but still people are scared that probably somehow uh, smallpox has come back in uh, another form. Uh, so that's one reason that people are so much scared. Now coming down to the clinical features. Now the clinical features of uh, uh, monkeypox, remember there are three things which would make uh, the clinical diagnosis easy. There should be a history of fever. This is this fever could be mild fever, could be moderate, could be high fever. Every individual is different depending on their immune system. Uh, they can respond in a variety of ways to the uh, exposure to the virus. So fever is one of the hallmarks of this infection. It is also coupled with lymphadenopathy. So there would be some form of lymph lymphadenopathy. Most of the cases because the virus enters through the nasopharyngeal uh, mucosa there would be cervical adenopathy but there can be some like adenopathy like for example if somebody is infected through um, a skin and uh, then there could be regional lymphadenopathy like uh, for example um, axillary lymphadenopathy or inguinal lymphadenopathy uh, but again in most of the cases it would be cervical lymphadenopathy so fever with lymphadenopathy and a characteristic rash which usually appears like you know in a couple of days usually three to four days that rash is vesiculopustular rash. Now, many people think that vesiculopustular rash are synonymous with chickenpox. But remember, in chickenpox, the, um, the, the appearance of rash is uh, very much, you know, the, the, it, it's in crop. So, like, the lesion would appear here and there, and uh, different lesions are in different stages. While um, in uh, monkeypox, it's usually all of a sudden... The rashes appear everywhere. Like most of the time, it would be on the face and on the on the um, peripheries, like on the arms and um, legs. But most of them, characteristically, are in the similar stage. So you would see, like either they are in the vesiculopustular form or in the small form, or they all of them have started crusting. So the lesions usually, again, these are no hard and fast rule, but in most of the cases, like I would say probably 80-90% of the cases, the lesions would be in the same state and that makes it different from chickenpox. So remember, again, in chickenpox, you rarely see lymphadenopathy. So fever with lymphadenopathy with a vesicopustular rash. Vesicopustular rash. Remember, in chickenpox, it's very rarely pustular. It's mostly vesicular, so there's a clear fluid. But if it's a cloudy fluid, cloudy fluid and lesions are slightly big, you should be thinking of monkeypox. So remember three things. Fever, lymphadenopathy, vesicopustular rash with more focus on the pustular component and all the lesions mostly. Again, in most of the cases, they would be in the same stage of development. So if you see this um, image on the left side, you can see a baby who has got a sort of a pustule on the finger. Then you can see a few pustules on the trunk and you can see that in the pustules you can see a cloudy a pustular material uh, and the lesion is surrounded by a rim of inflammatory changes. So there is a pinkish reddish rim of inflammation and in a few cases you might also see hemorrhage because these lesions are slightly more deeper as compared to uh, the measles or the um, chickenpox rash. So they have in fact the deep um, dermal layer as well. So some of the blood vessels they might get ruptured and you might see a little bit of hemorrhage in a few of the vesicles. So this is more common as compared to measles and as compared to chickenpox. Again as I told you most of the lesions would be either on the face or on the peripheries on the extremities. Now 
the incubation period is usually 5 to 21 days. So after getting exposed to an infected individual or an infected animal, there could be anywhere between 5 to 21 days before the affected child or the adult starts getting manifestation of monkeypox. So usually there is fever. So it always starts with fever because of the inflammatory response. So one to two, three days of fever. And then all of a sudden the rash appears. Psychopastoral rash and in between there will be lymphadenopathy. Obviously the child cannot tell you about lymphadenopathy. It's your examination that would... Uh, actually give you that idea that there might be a local or a generalized lymphadenopathy now as i told you earlier transmitted through respiratory droplets and with direct contact with the infected uh, human lesions or with infected animals now how do we differentially diagnose it from chicken pox and measles number one in monkey pox the fever appear is there for one to three days in chicken box again it could be the same like one to two days and the same goes in me so it's very difficult to say based on the you know uh, the duration of fever that that goes more in favor of monkeypox chicken pox or measles more or less it's the same like most of these viral exanthemes they always start with a febrile period and that febrile period is usually uh, very varied it could be like one two two three days on average sometimes can even go up to five days the most important thing is how the rash appears. In chickenpox, remember the lesions are mostly vesicular, rarely. They can be pustular as well. I mean, I've seen pustular cattle, rarely, rarely. It's mostly vesicular papilla, vesicular lesions, and their lesions appear in different stages. So, like it would start from a few like left spots on the, let's say, on the chest, and then next day, a few spots here and there. As the first one is crusting, there are a few new lesions appearing, let's say, on the lower limbs. So the lesions, they are in multiple stages of development. Some are just evolving, others are crusting. This is hallmark of varicella or chicken pox. Monkey pox lesions are similar to smallpox. So the lesions, they are often in the same stage of development. So even if it's a widespread, you'll see they're all pustular or they're all papular to begin with. And then they're all like in a, in a very short span of time, they start, all start becoming pustular. And then you'll see majority of them, they start like uh, developing scabs and crustaceans. So the lesions are often in one stage of development as far as monkey pox is concerned. Chicken pox has got like different stages. Measles is a very fine rash. I mean, measles has got sandpaper rash. So it's like very fine maculopapular rash. So very rarely it would get that big enough that it would become postular or uh, vesicular. Now, as far as the rash distribution is concerned, now chicken pox rash is more dense on trunk and usually it's not present on the on the on the soles and the palms while monkeypox monkeypox is more dense on the face and it's usually present on the palms of the face so if you look at the diagrams on this side so here you can see the finger is affected here you can see the fingers are affected here you can see the fingers are affected the palm and the soles are affected which is a bit rare for chicken pox like chicken you can have you might see one or two like you know papules appearing on the sole and the palms but like by and large chicken pox spares the palms and the soles it's mostly on the trunk monkeypox mostly on the face and on the palm and that's again you know because on the face and the lesions are a bit more deeper as compared to the chicken pox there are more chances of scarring more chances of scarring you might have seen like people uh, who are currently in their 70s or 80s who had were infected by um, uh, smallpox virus they still have got like you know big sort of pits on their face scars we as the like smallpox scar and that causes like permanent disfigurement so this is another concern that whether uh, the monkeypox virus can lead to scarring or not so obviously it can lead to scarring if the lesions are deep enough and especially if they are very densely you know scattered on the face uh, measles and chickenpox rashes they are quite rapid once they like you know, once they appear so very quickly like you know the whole within, within a couple of hours you know the whole body can be acted while it's slightly slow in case of monkeypox so this one is slow while the other two are rapid lymphadenopathy as i told you rarely occurs in the measles 
rarely occurs in chicken pox rarely while it's very common in monkey pox again as far as mortality is concerned uh chicken pox mortality is very low chicken pox mortality in pediatric population is very 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 low if any mortality is there it might be in unvaccinated adults rather you know adults who develop like varicella pneumonia so you know uh chicken pox can be more dangerous if the adults are affected but in kids it's got a very low mortality measles well has got a high mortality especially in developing world where it is coupled with malnutrition so mal is basically the underlying malnutrition that kills rather than the measles itself but because of the weak immune system uh, obviously and the complications of uh, measles they die but other than that like you know in developed countries number one measles is very rare number two even if measles occur the mortality is low while in case of uh, monkey pox we don't have enough data but whatever cases have happened especially with the central african um, strain the mortality is around 10% like one in 10 people uh, who are severely infected they can die because of a uh, monkey pox virus here i can show you a few images of uh, people infected by monkey pox virus so here you can see the hand of a child i told you that the distribution is on the face and mostly on the extremities especially the palms the wrists and the sole so here you can see a child who has got a vesicular postular lesion with a surrounding area of inflammation on the fingers and if you here see it shows a more magnified view and you can see that there is cloudy pustule and it's surrounded by area of inflammation which is very much characteristic of monkey pox virus here you can see an african boy who has got um, multiple uh, pus fill lesions on different parts of his extremity including the palm and the wrist and also on his eye so this is again a characteristic distribution of the monkey pox uh, rash on the extremities so again you can see large uh, pustules and um, they've got some area of inflammation uh this is an image which has been sent to me uh by one of my friends from pakistan and i think uh, two days ago he saw a case uh which had these lesions so you can see again this guy has got some lesions on his neck and uh, uh he told me that he had lymphadenopathy as well he had fever and um, you can see some lesions and again these are pustular lesions with some scabbing and the areas of um, inflammation surrounding that so um he sent this image for an advice and i told it looks like probably looks like monkey pox virus so he should report it to the health authorities uh so that they can further investigate uh, because obviously for diagnosis of these cases you have to uh you know do uh take samples from this uh, lesions and you culture them to see what type of virus is grown and uh, only the national labs have got i don't think private labs or the hospital labs have got the facilities to culture monkey virus it's usually done in public health laboratories which have got the facilities uh, to culture these types of um, lesions or the contents of these lesions to find out what virus is uh, grown so these are some of the images which make it crystal clear so if you see this lesion i think it's very hard to misdiagnose them it's very hard to misdiagnose them i mean it's these are characteristic so remember fever lymphadenopathy psychopastoral rash mostly on the extremities or on the face the diagnosis should be monkey pox unless and until proven otherwise especially in the context of these days that we are seeing some cases you know occurring sporadically here and there uh most uh, sort of you know uh, um, strange thing about these cases are they are not connected with one another so these are like you know cases occurring here and these are not the cases that have mixed with one another so these are just sporadic cases with no relation to one another so that's like uh, causing a concern like how people who are not concerned with uh, related with one another all of a sudden they start getting infected with monkey pox virus where this virus is coming from where this virus is thriving like what is the reservoir of infection how this thing is spreading so these are some of the answers uh sorry some of the questions that uh, need to be answered and i think the public health individuals from world health organization from cdc and other public health agencies from different countries would be looking into at the moment at this point in time find out the answers and maybe in the near future we find some answers to these questions 
moving on to the treatment and prevention. Now, one drug which is FDA and also is approved in the Europe that can be used for treatment of severe cases of monkeypox virus. And the name is Ecovirimat, which comes under the trade name of Pox. It is used for the treatment of cowpox and uh, chickenpox as well. And it can be used for the treatment of monkeypox as well. Then there are a few other experimental antiviral drugs. Cidovofir and uh, Brincidovofir. These are the two drugs, uh, experimental antiviral drugs, which uh, are used for the treatment of monkeypox. But by and large, most of the treatment remains supportive. So you have to make sure that you are giving them antipyretics, you are giving them good hydration, you are giving them, if the rash is itchy, you give them like antihistamines and you are like you know, making sure that the infection, the lesions, they do not get secondarily infected. In case if they get secondarily infected, then you can treat them with uh, systemic antibiotics. As far as the prevention is concerned, smallpox vaccine, which uh, was used back in the 70s uh, as a preventive tool for smallpox, so it's not used anymore, but uh, I think the CDC and some countries have got stock of smallpox vaccine just in case if like, you know, somehow uh, someday there is a bioterrorism uh, attack. So uh, smallpox vaccine can be used against monkeypox as well. The efficacy is around 85%. Those people who were um, given smallpox vaccine in their childhood when the smallpox, uh, you know, was a problem was a public health uh, those people might have got some immunity but obviously there has been like so many years so even if they have got any immunity that must have been you know vanished by now obviously because there has been no exposure but by and large the most uh, important preventive um, thing is avoiding contact and handling the um, infected lesions or the infected animal so if you are avoiding direct contact or if you're using good hand hygiene technique and barrier methods then the virus should not be getting you so um, I think in UK the government has offered a smallpox vaccine to the close contacts of those seven cases that were infected recently and they're just keeping a close eye on the situation as it is evolving uh, but the only important thing would be in case if this thing um, spreads which I don't think so, given the the way the, you know, in the past we saw smallpox and the way monkeypox has been behaving in the last two or three decades. I don't think there would be a much like a bigger threat or like pandemic level threat. But nevertheless, we should be prepared with having uh, good stocks of a smallpox vaccine so that it can be used in case if the need arises. And at the same time, there is a dire need of educating the public so that they avoid handling animals, especially in the, those areas where it is more common, like the Central African um, region. And uh, even like, but these days, like, you know, cases have been occurring worldwide, like in those uh, countries which are like remotely, quite like far away from uh, Central African region. So anyhow, there is a role for public health education, understand these things. And at the same time, you know, uh, training uh, the clinicians so that they can timely uh, diagnose in case if there are any monkeypox um, infections. And then they can like do uh, tracing of these cases so at least they do not spread it to other people. So this was um, all about um, monkeypox virus, a small lecture focusing on the uh, virus itself, uh, the clinical features, the treatment and the prevention so if you have uh, liked my video then give me a thumbs up and uh, if you haven't subscribed so far please uh, do subscribe to my channel share this video with your friends so at least they also get the knowledge about the current uh, situation of monkeypox and uh, if you've got any questions you can put it down in the comment section below and i will try my level best to answer it as soon as possible so have a very good day folks um, take care and bye bye